It's the Mean Gene Show here on KDWN 101.5 FM, 720 AM Las Vegas. And uh, we're getting you ready for week 15 of the National Football League. I am joined here on this Friday uh, with my co-host from Bally Sports Southeast, covers the Carolina Panthers and the Charlotte Hornets. Please welcome Dustin Pfeiffer. What's up, Dustin? Hey, what's going on, Gene? How are you? Well, hey, I'm confused. That's what I am because I'm trying to figure <laughs> out, you know, that with the Saturday football games that the NFL is doing. So we had to actually come on and, and uh, record our show here on a Friday. So by the time this airs in Las Vegas on uh, Saturday night, uh, the Saturday games would have already been played. But just like we were saying before we came on the air, there's just too many exciting games going on in the NFL <laughs> Uh, and we can't skip anything. It's, it's hard. To, it's hard to keep up with everything that's going on from from games to firings to, to COVID <laughs> protocols. I mean, it's just it's so much of your head spinning. It, it is, and believe it or not, it is spinning. So we're going to jump into this action quick because we got to talk about last night's game, uh, big uh, AFC West matchup over with the Raiders. I mean, with the Chiefs and the Chargers. So the Mean Gene Show is brought to you by Presidential Limousine by Captain, the official limousine service of the Mean Gene Show. You can give them a call at 702-438-5466. You can text them also, 702-410-6057. We're also brought to you by the Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino. You can experience the award-winning soul of Motown. Catch that show, people. Call and make your reservations now, 888-796-3564. All right, so quickly, week 15, no more buys, okay? So we actually have 16 uh, uh, games to talk about, including uh, the Saturday games, the Thursday night game, and all of the games that are taking place on Sunday. So, uh, only four more weeks uh, remaining in the 2021 NFL regular season. And Dustin, hey, check this out. For only the third time since 1990, the league enters week 15 without a team having clinched a playoff berth. So, this happened in 93, wow. and then it happened also in 2014. And believe it or not, folks, with four weeks to play, with four weeks to play, 28 teams remain in playoff contention. And we're going to talk about some of these. And then, you know, no question the competitiveness of the NFL is as good as it's ever been. The logjam of clubs with six and seven and eight or nine wins, 21 teams, is unprecedented. I mean, you can just look at the AFC wildcard teams and the teams in the hunt, all with six losses. It's just incredible, Dustin. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Like like we talked about last week, you got teams who a couple of weeks ago were number one seeds in the AFC, and now they're wondering if they're going to make the playoffs. So, I mean, there's just so much that can happen. You can go from winning a division to being a wild card team to being all the way out. So every every game, you got to make sure you're going out there and getting a win. Every game counts. And, and even as I say this now, as of Friday you know, morning, I mean, and with the games happening on – uh, Saturday, this could all change. And this is why the AFC is just really tight. So four NFL teams, New England with seven wins, Kansas City now uh, uh, with uh, six, uh, we're, we're now seven uh, game winning streak, Miami five, Tampa Bay four have winning streaks of four or more. Last time the league entered week 15 with as many winning streaks was in 2016. So, um, man, so much going on. Nine matchups, and including the one last night that featured both teams currently in the playoff position or within one game. We'll talk about those. So KC and L.A., uh, Vegas and Cleveland, Atlanta versus San Francisco, New England versus Indy on Saturday, uh, Green Bay versus Baltimore, Washington versus Philly, New Orleans versus Tampa Bay, Tennessee versus Pittsburgh. I mean, just so much is going on. We also talk about the top three teams in the NFC right now. They're all tied, Dustin, um, at 10-3. and three. That's Green Bay, Tampa Bay, and Arizona, all tied at 10-3. and three. So we don't know who's going to host the NFC championship game here. So everything is just so important right now. The top three teams in the AFC, New England 9-4, and four, Tennessee 9-4, and four, and KC now uh, at 10 and four as of uh, that win last night. So, and, and, and listen, it, it's never been more important to get that number one seed as these playoffs have changed now. You know, normally those top two teams used to get a bye, but if you, it's only one team now. So if you want to get that bye, you got to get that number one seed. So it's it's crucial to, to get that home field advantage and get that bye in the first round. 
it is very crucial, man. And I tell you, Dustin, it is just it, uh, it's just so exciting uh, uh, right now where we are in the NFL. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about uh, separation, you know, separation Sunday, separation. And and you know what? Uh, there is no separation in the AFC. I mean, there is no separation. Every game is just as tight uh, uh, as ever right now. Yeah, that, that's basically going to be the name, I guess, for the rest of the season, right? Not just for one week. Um, it's, it's it's every week you're trying to really not even separate. You're just trying to get a win to hold ground or, or, or gain maybe one spot. But there's just so much on the line. It, uh, it's it's unlike any year I've seen in a long time. Gee, obviously, the NFL always has parity, but this is pretty crazy what's going on right now. It's crazy. So let's go ahead and just quickly recap the, the Thursday night's game. Big AFC classic matchup there to – the uh, Los Angeles Chargers and the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs, uh, uh, this was a must win for both teams, actually. And that game last night could have defined uh, who's going to win the AFC West. But, you know, not so fast. I mean, there's still a couple of more games left. The game goes into overtime. Chiefs get the win, uh, 34-28. What do you think about that game last night, Dustin? That, that was a great football game. You don't get great football games on Thursday nights. So to have a game like that with the first place on the line of the division, I mean, it was just very impressive. And you got to give the Chiefs credit. They went up early, then got down, and they were kind of struggling in the middle of that game. But they were able to make some plays at the end um, to get a huge road win, which makes Mahomes 12-0 and um, in road games in the division, which is pretty incredible. But also got to talk about the Chargers coach, Eugene. I wanted to get your thoughts on what you thought about all the fourth down calls that he went instead of taking some points because that came back to bite him in the end. It did. And I was watching the game with my son who, who came home for the holidays there. And, and, uh, uh, he's a big time Chargers fan. He was shaking his head just, you know, um, especially right before the half, you just, you just got to get the points, you know, and, and, and it reminded me of the Super Bowl there when the Seattle Seahawks, you know, were trying to, uh, uh get fancy there and, and, and throw, uh, I just hate when teams get right down the goal line and, and, and throw a pass. I mean, unless you know you got something for sure. And they really did have something uh, with Jared Cook, man. That was a sure touchdown there. And he, he tried to run with the ball before he caught it. But, man, but to go and do it two more times after that, Dustin, I was shocked. You Those points, I mean, you, you're talking about nine points right there or, or whatever, you know, especially if you would have kicked the field goal. Yeah, I mean, you make a great point there. I mean, I know when you're playing the Chiefs, you, you, you think touchdowns are going to win, and they are. But this isn't necessarily the same Chiefs team that we've seen in the past. They're not necessarily, like, exploding except for when they play the Raiders. But, you know, this is a team where th- those three points, six points, even nine points, I mean, you're going to keep yourself in the game and, and keep yourself ahead. And you made the greatest point of all right there. It's one thing to go for it on fourth and goal when you're going to have the, have them backed up if you miss it. But at the end of the half, you're not going to have them backed up. You need to take the points when you can get them, and I think that was a huge momentum swing. That was the one that really stunned me there, and and man, it's just some I, I I don't know, but uh, hey, the Chargers will obviously live to to see another day because I think they're definitely you know in that wild card uh, hunt, and they probably stay right there in the, in the wild card, not in the hunt, but they are a wild card team, but they still have some tough games you know remaining also, and and a big one that last game of the season is against the. The Raiders there at Allegiant uh, Stadium, and, and and I'll be there to see, and and that's a scary game to play against a team in your division. So uh, they could go from you know wild card to not even to missing the playoffs, and and then they'll probably look back to that game last night, Dustin. Yeah, and I, and I think both these teams showed. I mean, obviously we know Kansas City is going to get in, um, but even the Chargers, both these teams showed that if they're in the playoffs with the quarterbacks that they have, I mean, we talk about Mahomes, but we don't give enough love to Justin Herbert. He he is amazing, and I, and I, I, I am I'm, as a Patrick Mahomes. And if he gets in the playoffs, um, nobody's going to want to face a quarterback like that and, you know, uh, Joey Bosa on the defense and things like that. So they're going to be dangerous if they get in. They will. So, hey – Let's go ahead and jump into the action on Saturday now. So, and we will repeat, uh, you know, by the time these games are played, uh, we would have already, well, by the time the show airs uh, uh, in Vegas, uh, we would have already known the outcome. So, Dustin, we got to be dead on with these picks here. But these picks will not be so easy, Dustin, because of 
COVID-19. COVID-19 will actually, or it will, it definitely change my picks here, Dustin. And uh, what do you make of what's happening across not only the NFL, but all of the professional sports here with this latest outbreak of, of, of COVID-19 cases? Yeah, it, it's kind of a mess across all sports right now. And, um, you know, I'm not sure what the answer is. I know they're enhancing protocols across all the leagues. So hopefully they can get a handle on it. I know it's difficult around the holiday time with everybody getting together. Um, but it, should, it just kind of goes to show you, Gene, that no matter how much you think you got a handle on something, you can't let your guard down and you got to be you got to be safe in what you're doing and protecting yourself. And um, because, I mean, like you said, these are impacting um, seasons, careers, yeah. jobs. I mean, this, this is huge right now as far as what's on the line and what players will, will play and will not play in these games. And I'm just going to quickly read what the commissioner or what the NFL sent out uh, yesterday uh, to all of the media and uh, effective immediately. All clubs will implement preventive measures that have proven effective masking regardless of vaccination status, remote or outdoor meetings, eliminating in-person meals and no outside visitors while on team travel. We will continue to strongly encourage booster shots uh, as the most effective protection. Finally, and based on expert advice, we will uh, adjust and return to participation requirements for those who have recovered from COVID-19. All of these changes are grounded in our data and science-backed approach with safety uh, our number one goal for the entire NFL community that came from the NFL on uh, uh, on Thursday, actually. But uh, let's talk about this game here. The Las Vegas Raiders will be uh, at first Energy Stadium in Cleveland. The Cleveland Browns, I tell you what. So Baker Mayfield, uh, he was one of the first ones that uh, uh, was uh, mentioned as not being able to start. Then Case Keenum, his backup, uh, he catches uh, COVID-19. And uh, the, almost the entire uh, Cleveland Browns team got COVID-19. So now they have the third string quarterback is going to play. Uh, and this uh, is a critical game here. Cleveland 7-6. and six. Uh, the Raiders uh, six and seven. Both teams still in the hunt there for a possible wild card spot. So, uh, who do you like in this game based on the circumstances? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're talking both quarterbacks. We're talking Jarvis Landry. We're talking the head coach Kevin Stefanski. Where I think they said twenty-one players total in the right. protocol, including t- and ten starters. So, and in my mind, Gene, I know you just read what the commissioner said. I don't think this game should be played. I know that they're trying to keep the schedule online and keep everything going with late in the season, but at some point, it, it becomes a competitive disadvantage. And and this is with everything in the line. The Browns' season is on the line every game, and for them to have to kind of go out there like this, I, I just. If they really want to be the safety and health of the players and really have a, a competitive balance, I think they should postpone this game so they can play it again. But, hey, they're not. They're going to keep going. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to take the Browns to rally together and know their mm-hmm. season's on the line and know that they're the underdogs and everybody thinks they have no chance. And I'm going to have them get a win at home to, to keep their season alive. Okay, I'm going to go with the Raiders because I just think it, as unfortunate as it is for the Browns and, you know, by the time people hear this show, I – I think the Raiders would have sneaked one in. But if you're right, Dustin, man, the Browns could rally around and take advantage of, you know, like they said in the NFL, next man up there. And it would definitely it would be a hell of a situation there. Uh, and, and it would be a, an incredible win if they were to put it yeah. out under these circumstances. It, it, it also appears to me, Gene, that the Raiders have just kind of given up. And I, and I know that's bad to say, and I know that's tough. But they've had a lot going this year, and I just think it's all caught up to them. And then last week they stomp on the Chiefs logo and then go out there and just get embarrassed. And oh my I, just, I just think it's really going downhill for them. So that's another reason that, I, that I'll take the Browns to win a close game. Yeah, and I didn't even want to mention last week's stats. I know uh, Raider <laughs> Nation didn't want me to cover those stats from last I'm week. So, I'm sorry, Raider Nation. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I, I tried to avoid it. But okay, so we have another Saturday, and this is the nightcap Saturday game here. That, that'll that take place there. And this is going to be an important one. Uh, ba- uh, um, the Baby Brady is who I'm talking about. Mac Jones uh, is trying to get his seventh win on the road here. This is hasn't been done by a rookie, I don't think. Uh, and, and a consecutive win here. This, this is unreal. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to take the Colts here because no one – uh, has really focused on the the Colts are playing some great football, Dustin, and I just like them in this game 
to win at home. I like their defense. Both teams are coming off a bye, by the way. Uh, the, uh, the, the Patriots haven't played since uh, they beat Buffalo in that uh, 14-10 uh, on that Monday night game there. And then the Colts uh, haven't played since they just annihilated the, the Texans at 31 the nothing there. So uh, the game is played at Lucas Oil Stadium. I, th- I just think at, by the end of the night, the, the Colts will be victorious. Yeah, you, you read my mind. I, I'm going to take the Colts in an upset. Um, the one thing that does worry me is that, that that defense is very good for the Patriots, and the Colts really need to rely on Jonathan Taylor in that run game. But let's not forget a couple weeks ago when the Patriots beat Tennessee. Um, they blew out Tennessee, but Tennessee had four turnovers, but they ran for over 200 yards. So I think the Colts really need to rely on Jonathan Taylor in the running game and feed him the ball. And then let Carson Wentz, make, Carson Wentz make a couple plays here and there. But it's desperation time for the Colts. They've won four or five. They're playing great football. But they're still only seven and six, and they're sitting right there on that cutoff line. So I'm going to take them to get desperate here in a primetime game at home um, and pull off the upset and get the win over the Patriots. All right. So now let's take it on to the first game that will take place on Sunday, and it's going to take place in Buffalo at High Mark Stadium. And it's the 5-8 and eight Carolina Panthers – at the Buffalo Bills, so I understand that please, Cam. Please Newton, don't, please don't, please don't mention the stats from last week. Dude. If we're not going to mention, <laughs> if we're not going to mention the Raiders stats, let's not mention the Panthers. Well, they're okay. not as bad. I mean, you know, it, it, but it was an uh, a NFC South division game that I know Panthers fans wanted to win that game there. And uh, Buffalo, so both teams are coming off a loss here because uh, Tampa Bay took care of of the Buffalo Bills in overtime in a game that. I thought Buffalo was going to win, but they they didn't. So now you got some desperation going here on on, on both teams. But what's the word uh, in in Carolina as far as uh, Cam Newton? Yeah, it's 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 not going well. I mean, it's not. And again, it's not. I think I said this a couple weeks ago. It's not all Cam's fault to ask him to come in this late in the season with a bad offensive line. Now Christian McCaffrey's hurt, so. You're really asking him to do a lot with a little. Um, I know we've got a couple of good receivers, but, you know, you're asking him to do a lot coming in off the street like that. And it just hasn't went well. Um, I don't necessarily think that, you know, he should be benched for P.J. Walker because the backup has shown that he really should even be a backup in the league. He comes in and he's throwing interceptions off his back foot. But just a tough time for the Panthers. They don't have any identity um, as to far as what they want to do on offense, and now their defense is starting to give up on the on the run game. So a lot of problems all around. So I don't see a, a great finish in now, Gene. Starting with the Bills game, they have the toughest schedule in the league for the last last few games of the season. So um, it could be a brutal end to the season for the Panthers. So that, that'll be something to watch. But, you know, talking about how bad it is for the Panthers, I think it's even more bad for the Bills right now, Gene, because you have Super Bowl expectations this year. Mm-hmm. And now here you are sitting seven and six, and you're fighting to even make the playoffs. Yeah, I so I'm, I know Josh Allen's hurt, and I think they said he's going to play. So I, I just don't see any way they can lose this game at home against the Panthers. Um, without having some repercussions of what this team is expected to do. So I'm going to have them get a win against a, a depleted Panthers team right now. Yeah, I got Buffalo winning this game, but oh my goodness. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Carolina was to find a way to, to pull off the upset. And if uh, Cam could, can rebound and have a good game, that could happen. So uh, we'll be you know keeping an eye on this game here as, as this one unfolds on Sunday. All right, the next game, the Arizona Cardinals uh, at the Detroit Lions, 1-11-1, Arizona 10-3. and three. Probably won't have to spend a lot of time on this game. Uh, Arizona did lose to the Rams Monday night, 30-23, to and uh, Lions lose to the Denver Broncos, 38-10. I like the Cardinals, uh, the, despite the bad news there with DeAndre Hopkins. I like the Cardinals as well. As well, I just wanted to make sure that you mentioned that your Super Bowl team, the Cardinals, lost to my Super Bowl team, the Rams, last week. But yes, Cardinals bounce back and get a win against the Lions this week. Yeah, and they they lose that home field advantage there. You know, with that that three way tie there with uh, with the Green Bay, Tampa Bay, and and uh, the Cardinals there. So we don't know who's going to host the NFC. So all of these games are important there for those top three teams in the NFC. But I like the Cardinals to get this this win on the road. Uh, the next game we have is the Houston Texans, two and eleven, at the Jacksonville Jaguars, two and eleven, and uh, you know what? We might we might stop at this one here uh, because I know we have to talk about uh, the Urban Meyer situation. So, in case you didn't know, and if you haven't heard, Urban Meyer uh, was fired um, the other day 
by the Jacksonville Jaguars with uh, four games remaining on their schedule. If you've listened to this show, you have heard me and Dustin Pfeiffer. Uh, we were uh, definitely in agreement that, number one, he shouldn't have never been hired. Uh, and uh, we knew he wouldn't quit because nobody quits, especially when they're under contract. You want to get that money. But uh, did the Jacksonville Jaguars do the right thing? They absolutely did the right thing. And, he, he, you know, they basically they, they fired him right in the middle of the night where nobody kind of heard him. But um, just too many things on and off the field. I mean, you got the incident where he's in a bar. He doesn't fly back with his team after after a game, which is just, you know, you don't see coaches do that. Now you got the instance where they said uh, Josh Lambeau, the kicker, said that he kicked him in practice mm-hmm. in a preseason game. Mm-hmm. And then you look at just how, how it's been going on the field. I don't think it hasn't been said enough about Trevor Lawrence, Gene. Mm-hmm. He's a generational talent that they drafted number one overall. He was the highest rated player since, you know, Andrew Lug, John Elway, all of those. And they've made – I know it's a rookie season. He's going to have struggles. But they've made him look like he, he is not even going to be able to be a quarterback in the league. And you can't have that when you have, when you have it going like that on the field. And then you add stuff off the field. You can't have that combination. It's just not a good recipe for success. And they made the right choice. You can't wait around and let the culture continue to um, go downhill in this locker room and in this organization. Um, you have to build for the future. You've got Trevor Lawrence. You need to try to get somebody in here. And they made the right call. And I think this is probably the last straw for Urban Meyer because I just don't see, even in college, yeah. as much as he's won, how can an athletic director or somebody – look at their people in the eye, whether it's players, families, whoever it is, and say that this guy is the guy running your program with how he acts off the field. I agree with you uh, 100%, Dustin. And and I was, uh, I think when it came through, it was late at night in the middle middle of the night and the owner made that decision. And, uh, of, you know, when they had, uh, when he got in trouble with the uh, situation there in Ohio, uh, he said, hey, you got to regain the trust of, of, of this organization. And he didn't. He failed to regain the trust and and it was the right decision and and uh as far as trevor lawrence you know we hopefully we'll get a chance to see this guy put in uh, in the right hands of people who's going to take his career and 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 make it blossom because i think he does have a lot of potential and 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 he will be one of those elite quarterbacks now that uh uh, Urban Meyer uh, no longer has anything to do with his future. But as far as this game goes, I think Jacksonville, I think the Jaguars win. I think they beat the Texans. Both of these teams are are, are bad, but I think the Jaguars are a little bit better than the Texans. The Texans are just horrible. And uh, I think the Jaguars win at home and, and start the rebuilding right, right there on Sunday. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I, I think this is actually going to, you know, rejuvenate them. I'm not saying they're going to go win a bunch of games. But you heard it in uh, Trevor Lawrence's press conference. He said, listen, he didn't, he didn't say that it was a distraction, but he said what this does is it provides clarity. And if you have your starting quarterback saying it provides clarity, what that means in my eyes is that it's a relief to this team that this mm-hmm. situation's over. And I think they go out, rejuvenate, and play a good game, and they beat the Texans. Yeah, yeah, I think so, which is uh, a, a definitely a relief. And, uh, whoo. I, you know, when I saw it, I, I smiled and, and, uh, I know, I think I sent you a text too. uh, what was it yesterday? Hey, whew, I, I just said urban Meyer, LOL. So you knew we was going to talk about it today. Yes. You don't, you don't wish anybody to get, fired. no, you I mean, don't, you don't wish anybody to lose jobs, but, but this, this guy, happens, it was yeah, a joke. He, he brought it on himself. Right. Yeah, he brought it on himself. He was a joke to be, to to begin with. So we're going to end it on that note. I think we're going to probably be in a rapid fire mode here in the second half. But, hey, uh, we're at the bottom of the hour. And uh, when we come back here, we're going to knock out the uh, second half of games here uh, for week 15. You are listening to the Mean Gene Show on uh, KDWN 720 AM, 101.5 FM, Las Vegas. And we are back, folks. Once again, you're listening to the Mean Gene Show here on KDWN 720 AM 101.5 FM, Las Vegas. Getting you ready for week 15 of the National Football League, folks. Yes, it is moving, 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 moving. No more buys. Uh, The week got underway on Thursday night, and it is moving. So we just finished up uh, with the Jacksonville Jaguars, Houston Texans game, and uh, following up on Urban Meyer, who was relieved of his duties. 
And I believe uh, the interim coach, is it Bevel? Is it Daryl Bevel, I believe? Yep, that's that's correct. Is going to get his opportunity with four games remaining and don't know what direction that uh, organization is going to go in. But, man, they have a lot of work in the offseason. Uh, the show is brought to you by the – Presidential Limousine by Captain There's the official limousine service of the Mean Jeans Show. Call them, please. Get in that limo. You got to ride around in style when you're in Las Vegas. 702-438-5466. We're also brought to you by the Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino. Hey, head over to the sports book. Things are about to get exciting because in the what second, what third week in January, the playoffs. The playoffs are about to start. Uh, we have the Super Bowl. You got the Pro Bowl. Vegas is going to be off the chain. So you want to get over there to the uh, sports book so you can put all that money down on uh, whoever you think is going to win the AFC, the NFC, uh, and the Super Bowl because, hey, uh, me and Dustin, we're going to be out there, man. We're going to be out there. We're going to do our show, our last show uh, of the 2021-22 uh, season, Dustin. Looking forward to that, man. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to get out there and enjoy all the stuff in Vegas. And, and, and a huge shout-out to Vegas because uh, I think I saw Gene, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like they had a Super Bowl coming there soon, right? Yeah, yeah, that is, uh, that, man, that is going to be huge. The Super Bowl in Vegas, could you imagine? Uh, I mean, the Super Bowl, even when the Super Bowl is not in Vegas, everybody's in Vegas. So I can only imagine what it's going to be like to be in Las Vegas when, when they actually have the Super Bowl in 2024, 20, thanks to the city of New Orleans and Mardi Gras. <laughs> Absolutely. Just worked out perfect. All right, so let's jump in here and move it right along here. Uh, the next game we got is the Jets, three and ten, who are mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. They will be at the Miami Dolphins, six and seven. Dolphins are still mathematically in the playoff hunt, and uh, I like the Dolphins to, to win this game on Sunday. Uh, Dustin, I do too. And you said it last week. Watch out for the Dolphins; they're right there to maybe grab one of these wild card spots. And I think they keep it going with the win over the Jets. All right, here's a big time NFC East matchup here. The Dallas Cowboys nine and four at the New York Giants four and nine. Opposite records there. Cowboys are trying to get that tenth win there and try to take control of that NFC East. They took uh, advantage of it. It was a close game against the Washington football team. As a matter of fact, Washington boy, they came close to pulling off the upset last week, and then the Chargers they take. Uh, well, actually, I take that back. The uh, well, yeah, the Chargers beat the uh, Giants last week, uh, thirty-seven twenty-one. But Dustin, I am getting ready to put the Dallas Cowboys on upset alert. I got the Giants winning. Well, I, I was leaning that way. Do we know if Daniel Jones is playing, or is it still Mike Glennon? You know what? Uh, I know Glennon came in there, had two touchdowns last week, including that rushing. I do yeah, not I, have the latest information I, on that. I, I, I'm with you on that. I think it's going to be a very close game. I'm going to pick Dallas just because I think Glennon is playing, I believe. Um, but I'm with you. I, 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 even though they won last week against Washington, I'm not really sure if I like what I'm seeing from the Cowboys right now. I said it last week, their identity, they, they're just not sure. They're banged up in the run game. Dak. Uh, we love Dak. He's a great player, but he's not playing at the level he was at the start of the season. So they need to get some things going. Um, hopefully they can do it this week. But I, I, I think it's going to be a tight game, maybe a one-score game in the fourth quarter. But I'm going to pick the Cowboys to get a win. Okay, yeah. I I, 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 uh, I, I get it. I mean, they. this is one of those – you just never know when it comes to a division game with the NFC um, – East and 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 last week was a case in point. There, you know, Cowboys was up twenty four nothing. Next thing you know, Washington comes back and and nearly steals that game from from Dallas. So uh, keep an eye on this game. It's going to be played at MetLife Stadium there in, in 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 New York. All right, the next game, another NFC East matchup here, and both of these teams are still in. As a matter of fact, I think right now, as it stands, the Washington Football Team is. Even with that loss last week, they are still in uh, in a wild card spot. It's the Washington Football Team six and seven at the Philadelphia Eagles six and seven, and I would say that whoever wins this game it, it will will probably get will be a wild card uh, uh, contender. There, uh, would you agree, Dustin? Man, what, what a massive game this is! Yeah, whoever wins this is definitely going to take control of probably grabbing one of those wild card spots. Yeah. Just how bad, how bad the bottom of the NFC is, but. The, the Washington's in the same place as the Cleveland Browns, if not worse. 
Um, no t- Taylor Heineke, no yeah. t- Kyle Island. So now yeah. they've had to sign Gary Gilbert off a practice squad from the Patriots to possibly start this game. So it's another one of those games where I don't know if it should be played because I think yeah. Washington has over 20 players in the protocol. So yeah. I know I picked. I know the Browns are going through the same situation, and I picked the Browns. But with this one, I think the Eagles are a little better than than what the Browns are facing with the Raiders. So I'm gonna take the Eagles to get a win at home. And I can understand, you know, uh, your point, and 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 you're not alone with your thoughts there that some of these games should be canceled. But you know, we're talking week 15, and you're talking now. This is happening so late in the season. There's just no room to reschedule these games. You know, and, and, and Super Bowl and a lot of these things have already been pushed back. You know, uh, Super Bowl is February 13th, you know. So, I mean, you, you just I, – I, the NFL just doesn't have – I mean, yeah, they could probably schedule some late week games. You know, you're looking at some, you know, Thursday because there's no more thir- – well, yeah, there's, well, I think we still got some Thursday night games. I mean, they could potentially do it, but I, they, they, they're they not doing it. They're not even entertaining it now. They just made those, you know, minor tweaks to, to the, uh, to to uh, to some of the scheduling, uh, or, or to some of the protocols as far as yeah. I, I just I just think they can maybe move. You know, they can't move a lot around because of the schedule. But if they can maybe move the, that Saturday Browns game to a Monday or even a Tuesday. Yes, it would cause some short week problems, but it would allow more people to be back um, and probably less injuries because you have more depth for those teams to play those games. Yeah, and that's just a big topic there. And and uh, I'm going to pick the Eagles. I had already picked the Eagles anyway before the uh, the announcement of of, of uh, Taylor Henneke. And 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 uh, I just think the Eagles. This is this is a big time game. They're going to be uh, at home there at Lincoln Financial Field. They know the importance here. And and I think the Eagles are going to sneak in. I think they're going to. I think the Eagles. Gonna, the Eagles are going to sneak in. Uh, the playoffs. No, I, I think they are too, and they actually have an identity. They know to run the ball. They know to use Jalen Hurts and his legs on offense. And so I, I like the way they're playing, and I think they will grab one of those wild card spots. All right. The next game we have is the Tennessee Titans, 9-4 and four at the Pittsburgh Steelers, 6-6-1. Six, six and one. Interesting game here because the Steelers are, uh, are still fighting for their – uh, a wild card playoff lives as, as far as their their season and uh, the Tennessee Titans uh, regardless of uh, their running back situation they are still finding ways to get it done they beat Jacksonville 20 to nothing uh, in their last game the, the Steelers haven't really played uh, in in a while there they haven't played since that Minnesota uh, uh, loss there where they were down uh at one time, where, where, where was it twenty something to nothing? There it looked like they were just going to get blown out there, and uh, and uh, they were down twenty nine to nothing, and they come back and uh, lose uh, the game thirty six to twenty eight. So uh, the game is going to be played at Heinz Field, and now Dustin, you know I'm going to pick first here. Okay, now I, I uh, look, I'm ready for this. <laughs> look, well, th- this is an important game. I will tell you what. Uh, the, the the Pittsburgh Steelers, the defense, uh, yeah, uh, you can never count them out. And it is because of games like, you know, uh, they played the Chargers. I think the Chargers had them beat like uh, the game was over. You know, you're watching the game. The game was over. Next thing you know, they they make a game out of it. And I don't know how many more times they they're going to be able to do this now, you know, but what it what it, it makes for good you know uh tv but it doesn't make for wins and 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 here they are uh in another situation where they they've done it twice uh maybe three times this year where they've come up short but at some time they got to punch it in now they i would like to give them a chance to beat the the uh the titans uh because they don't have derrick henry but it doesn't matter because the steelers defense they're just not stopping anybody on the run dustin no no they are not and that's surprising because you would think out of all the things that are going on with the offense or what may not be the defense always seems to stand up and give them a chance to win games so it was very surprising to see that when they went to minnesota and just let dalvin cook run for it with 200 yards yeah i'm gonna go with pittsburgh at home to, 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 so to, all, all that being said, you're going with the Steelers. I, 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 look, I'm, I, well, because I, I, look, Tomlin, if somehow they find ways to win. Uh, they, they find ways to have a winning season. I, I, I can't see them being 6-7-1 and one after this game. Uh, and, and, and because that AFC North is still undecided. Man, anybody yeah. could win that, that division. And it's not, I mean, as bad as they're playing, 
they're not playing bad enough for me to just say, well, the season is over because I just don't believe it. Yeah, well, you know me and you know which way I'm going. I'm going to take <laughs> the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, look at that. I, I, I shocked you. I'm taking you the did. Pittsburgh Steelers. You really I did. Taking them, and you, said, you said you took the words out of my mouth. No matter how far this team gets down, I go back to one guy, and it's Mike Tomlin. He always finds a way for his team to win games when they're out of it and nobody expects them to win. And here they are, they lose a the game and people think they're right back out of it and they're playing a good Tennessee team. And Tennessee is the better team. But mm-hmm. being at home, I think Mike Tomlin finds a way to lift them up um, and they get a win to hang on to slim playoff hopes. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a crazy season. And just like we talked about that AFC, man, so many games are within, you know, teams are within one game of being in the playoffs. And, and, you know, when you look at the Steelers play, you would say like, man, their season is over. They're, they're done. But when you look at that AFC, you know, it's like, man, nobody's done over there in that AFC yet. You know, and and when you look at the AFC North and, and then Baltimore and Cleveland and Cincinnati, man, everybody it, that they are still alive. So, yeah, it, it, it's wide open. And you know me, you know me, I, I, I've been on record for how bad I think the Steelers are. So yeah. For me to pick the Steelers, it's a, it's a big shot, but I'm taking them to pull the upset. Oh, my goodness. Wait till I tell Mr. Picks who you pick. Oh, man, he's going to be like, Dustin Pick, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next game, we got uh, another AFC North, and this is going to be a good one, too. The Cincinnati Bengals, 7 and 6. At the Denver Broncos, seven and six, and there we go with these seven and six, seven and six, six lost teams here that still have a chance. And uh, who you like in this one, Dustin? I, I honestly don't know who to pick in this game, G. I've been on Cincinnati as being the best team in this division, and then every week when I think they're going to separate themselves, they lose a the game at home. They probably should win. They should have beat the Forty ers at home last week, and they didn't. And now they go to a tough place to play in Denver. And I just, I just don't. You know what? I, I'm going to take the Bengals. I wasn't going to do it, Gene. I was going to take the Broncos, but I, I go back to the quarterback matchup. It's Joe Burrow versus Teddy Bridgewater, and I just think Burrow, being that talent that he is, this is his time to lift his team up and make plays to carry his team to the playoffs. And I think he's going to do it. So I got them going on the road and getting a big win in Denver. I do, too, because, look, I, I think the Baltimore Ravens are going to lose here, and we haven't gotten to them yet, But which is – and if everything just kind of stays the way it is, uh, it's just going to be a, a tie, a four-way tie in the uh, AFC North. And this is why I think the Bengals are going to win. I think the Bengals are going to go get Denver. I think, you know, Denver's been on that roller coaster, win one, lose one, win one, lose one. And, and uh, last week they um, – who did they beat last week? They well, well, they played Detroit. So I mean, you could say yeah, hey, they didn't yeah. really have much of a competition last week. But I think the uh, you know the, the the Bengals pissed off. They went in overtime with San Francisco. Didn't didn't really pick them to lose last week. I thought they would beat the Forty ers but I don't see the Bengals dropping two in a row. Um, and and even though this game they got to travel the mile high, uh, but I I think the the Bengals get the win. Oh. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm, I'm a Joe Burrow believer, and him and Jamar Chase have a good connection. So uh, I, any game like that that's a big game, I'll go with the quarterback play and rely on him to make some plays. Absolutely. So here we go to another important game here. Uh, one loss team here. Uh, not one loss, but uh, seven and six team here, six and seven. Both of these teams still have an outside chance here. Atlanta Falcons, six and seven at the San Francisco 49ers team. We just talked about their uh, big win uh, over – Cincinnati in overtime last week. Uh, they're seven and six. They're at home now at Levi's Stadium. Uh, who do you like uh, in this game against the Falcons yeah. and Forty ers Yeah, I think I'm going to have to stop um, or start giving some credit to the Forty ers because I thought they were a team early in the year who looked down and out. Jimmy G just didn't look like he had it. Um, Trey Lance was kind of hurt, so they didn't really know which way they were going. But they're picking their game back up. Their defense is starting to play well. Bosa is is wreaking havoc. And then Debo Samuel and George Kittle are just making play after play. It's unbelievable to see what they're doing. So I've got them riding high. I don't think the Falcons are that good. I mean, they beat – I hate to admit they beat a bad Panthers team last week. Um, so with them traveling out to the West Coast, I got the 49ers getting the win and keeping it rolling. Yeah, I got the 49ers winning also um, and, and, and just keeping things interesting in that NFC – 49ers can improve to eight and six there. All right, the next game we have uh, Green Bay Packers ten and three at the Baltimore Ravens eight and five. I don't think Lamar Jackson is playing in this game. Am I right? He has not practiced all week. 
Um, but John Harbaugh still says he thinks that he's going to play, but they said it's going to be a game time decision. Mm. So it's going to come right out to warm ups um, on the day of. So that, that makes it interesting. But from my eyes, regardless if Lamar plays or not, I'm taking the Packers because I think they've got it rolling right now. Yeah. They struggled a little bit in the first half against uh, the Bears last week, but then they turned it on. And I'm telling you what, if Aaron Rodgers is playing like that with nine good toes um, and he's talking about how bad his foot is, I wish I could play like that because <laughs> that's unbelievable. What he, I mean, we already know how good he is, Gene, but he's taking it even to another level. It's unreal to watch this guy play football. And that could just be the biggest distraction that I've ever heard of. Uh, you know, I, I've seen no signs of anything bothering this guy. The way they have uh, they beat the brakes off the Bears last week, 45-30 in, in uh, Cleveland. Uh, they get Baltimore last week, 24-22, and uh, man, uh, and that's why I said so. Baltimore loses; they get six losses, and then you just got that 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 tie, that four way tie there uh, potentially. And, and I don't know who's going to win the AFC North, and 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 it's going to be interesting to see. But I like Green Bay winning this game on Sunday. All right, now it brings us down to a, a NFC West matchup here. Uh, believe it or not, folks, this team. As bad as they have played this year, still have an outside chance of making a, a wild card. The Seattle Seahawks, 5-8 and eight at the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, your team, Dustin, to go to the Super Bowl at 9-4. and four. Um, who, do you, who do you like here? Well, I, I was worried on the, the, the track that the Rams were headed on with how they played the last few weeks. But, man, did they put a performance on Monday night. Um, and they did it without um, a lot of the guys they normally have because of COVID protocols. And, that's only been enhanced this week. Uh, the Rams are another team. I think the Rams, the the um, Browns, and the, and Washington are the three teams that have been hit the hardest. Um, now you've got Von Miller added to protocol. You've got Odell Beckham Jr. So you know who knows who all is going to. There's still time for some of those guys to come off the list. Um, but seeing the way Matt Stafford played last week. That is why I had them pick to go to the Super Bowl because he came over in this McVay offense to play like that. And when they're running the football like that and, and doing play action passing like that, um, they're hard to beat. So I, I've got them, even with all the pro- people in protocol, I've got them winning at home um, to keep it going. And they're going to be right on the heels to still try to win that division with Arizona. So um, I've got them to, to keep the momentum going and get a win this Sunday. Yeah, I like the Rams too because you're right. That was a big-time win there. And and they you know they put Arizona now in that, that three-way tie there. Uh, and and you're right. They could well win the division, but uh, COVID certainly is is, is going to take their toll there, especially on that defense there. So, you know, uh, man, the game is at home, which you know won't matter. But COVID certainly matters, and you definitely want to have your players out there. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if Seattle goes in there and plays a spoiler type of a, a game and get a win. But I think uh, the Rams got enough players there. To, to, to squeak out a win and, 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 and get it done to to improve to ten and four and uh, and, and keep marching in there and, and hopefully playing at home uh, in the Super Bowl. Next game, uh this is your Sunday night game here. So we are moving right along here. Sunday night game, New Orleans Saints, man, we thought this would really be an important game uh late in the season. Uh had Jameis Winston uh finish uh the season, but it's still an important game and, and the Saints still have an outside chance to to make it as a wild card, uh, New Orleans Saints six and seven at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers ten and three. Uh, I think the Buccaneers are like a double digit uh, favorite there uh, to win. Yeah, so. I believe it. I believe it's eleven points. Yeah, so uh, I got the Buccaneers winning, uh, improving to eleven and three, especially knowing that they are in a position to host the uh, NFC playoffs there throughout. Uh, uh, we could we could be looking at a three way tie there between uh, Tampa Bay, Green Bay, and and the Cardinals. And we have to figure out how how who, who gets the tiebreaker there. But I think uh, the Buccaneers win on Sunday, Sunday night. Yeah, yeah, and, and let's not forget that since Tom Brady has went to Tampa, that New Orleans is the team that's beat him the most. And they beat him this year in the Super Bowl, Superdome. So this is this is going to be a game where um, the Bucs should not be taking them lightly. And I think Tom Brady is, is tired of, of losing to this New Orleans team. It's the one team that's kind of gotten in his way since he's been there. And we talk about Aaron Rodgers, Gene, but, I, I mean, I, I know we say it over and over, and it gets tiresome to hear, and, and even I said that. Because, I mean, listen, Gene, Tom Brady's been playing quarterback since I was a senior in high school. Um, wow. and, and now I'm, I'm almost, now I'm almost 37 years old. So, I mean – 
to this guy my whole football life, basically. And my, you know, I, I've, I've seen him play football, and he just doesn't slow down. He's playing at an elite level right now. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the league, and it's you just got to give respect to what he's doing. And I think, like you said, with with home field on the line, with the way New Orleans has beat him in the past. I think he's going to come out and try to make a statement on prime time and maybe throw four or five touchdowns. I got him having a huge game and the Bucks getting a win at home. Yeah, this is going to – I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I, You know, Alvin Kamara coming back does give the the uh, the Saints some hope. And then and, and their defense is not bad now. I mean, this is not where – this is not the Saints team that's just going to lay down because it's Tom Brady. I mean, they, they're in a division, and they have played each other, uh, you know, really good over the last couple of years there. And they and like you say, it's the one team that gets under their uh, Tom Brady's skin. So it's going to be interesting to see. But I, I like the Saints winning, and, uh, I, you know. It, you, like the, you like the Bucks winning. Right? I mean, I'm sorry. I like the Bucks yeah. winning. Yeah, I like the – I just like, want to make sure. No, 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 no. I like the Bucks winning. And, 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 the only, and I understand that 11-point spread there because of the quarterback play there. You know, that's – that gives them a hell of a, a disadvantage there with, uh, uh, with, with you know, without having a, a good quarterback there, right? Uh, in, yeah, in I, don't, I don't think the Saints. I don't think the Saints lay down. But you, a bold prediction here first. I think Tom Brady throws five touchdowns. Ooh, fire. okay. We will grade our papers for sure next week. All right, Vegas. You heard Dustin Pfeiffer saying five touchdowns from the forty-four year old on on Sunday night all right uh and then monday monday night football here and we won't spend a lot of time on this one because we don't have a lot of time to spend on it but uh believe it or not the minnesota vikings are still in playoff contention there uh i don't think the bears are uh they are at chicago soldier field uh against the four and nine chicago bears uh justin fields there i believe uh you know what i think the bears are gonna upset the vikings i think the bears are really gonna play spoiler there for minnesota I think I'm picking the Chicago Bears to upset the Vikings on Monday Night Football. Uh, I think it's kind of scary, Gene, that we're kind of on the same <laughs> wave, same wavelength today. I don't know if I like that. We picked the Steelers. We both picked the Colts. I mean, we, I mean, it is just I, I, I don't know. You know, and I, I watched the Bears. They, they got beat by 15, but if you watch that first half, they were very competitive with with the Packers. Um, and Justin Fields played a good first half, so. The Vikings are the better team, and they need this game to, to stay really the playoff do. race. But, but, what, but what have we said all year, Gene, about this team and about Mike Zimmer? They've lost games close that they should have won. Right. I think that I think that happens here on a Monday night. It's a division it's game. It's a division but game. Regardless if the Bears are going to be in or out of it, those fans are always crazy. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think Fields goes out and has a good performance, and that, that defensive line can slow down Dalvin Cook a little bit. And I got the Bears for the upset. Yeah, I think it's, it's. I think they're gonna win one for Nagy, who they know is probably gonna be fired at the end of the of the year. But I think they, I think they get it done. I, I, I do. So, all right, hey, that is it for week fifteen of the National Football League. I hope you have enjoyed the show. I hope we were right on our Saturday picks there we'll find out i'm sure people will let us know hey you guys were completely wrong there but i think we're going to be right dustin on our saturday games there so um enjoy your weekend folks uh, enjoy your sunday games and uh we'll come back here next week and do it again well you know what i don't okay so next week is christmas so we're gonna have to figure out what we're gonna do uh but uh I, we we got to work some things out there but anyway uh we just take it one week at a time but anyway enjoy your weekend uh dustin as always man thanks for your contribution thanks uh you you and your family uh enjoy your week man and a merry christmas to you thanks gene same to you and, and merry christmas and happy holidays to all the listeners out there all right folks we'll see you back here uh well, we'll let you know when we come back here. You have been listening to the Mean Gene Show right here on KDWN 720 AM, 101.5 FM, Las Vegas.